welcome everyone. Welcome to Cape Ann Art Waves. I'm Christine Fisher, your host of today's program, coming to you by way of 1623 Studios located in Gloucester, Massachusetts. My fellow co-producer Jacqueline Ganim DeFalco and I I want to give a big shout out to the generosity of our sponsors who have stepped up to make this show possible. They are Prince Insurance Agency, MK Fisher, Visual Artists, Martha K. Anger, Real Estate Advisor with Compass Realty, Protective Packaging, and Coming Pro. We're very appreciative to our partners, CRs, for the terrific job they do with our marketing, as well as 1623 Studios, who do an equally terrific job with the distribution of our show. Our mission of the program is to bring forward our area's talented artists, highlighting their story, their journey, and their work. Today, I'm very excited to introduce to you an award-winning fine art photographer, Ruthie Schneider, whose photographs will leave you with always wanting to know more. At least they do for me. Mysterious and sometimes quirky, Ruthie has a very unique eye and point of view. I had the pleasure to interview her better half, uh, photographer and digital media artist Matt Segalis back in April of 2020, my very first interview. Matt was very brave. <laughs> Ruthie shows her work frequently with the Rockport Art Association and Museum. She's a member of, member of the experimental group, along with memberships with the Rocky Neck Art Colony and Sea Arts. Speaking of Rocky Neck, she's got a piece in a member show coming up soon titled Rocky Neck Now 2022 Part 2. It starts April 10, March 10 to April 10, so it's right around the corner. Don't, don't miss it. With a master's in arts education and a degree in photography and weaving along with art and design, Ruthie has a solid grounding in her craft, and I'll let her fill in the blanks. Welcome, Ruthie. Hi. Thank you. It's great to have you. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm very appreciative. Thank you. Oh, you bet. You bet. Uh, let's start off by unpacking your journey a bit, just to kind of set the table. Well, um, I always had an interest in fine arts as a young person. Um, I lived in New Jersey about a 45 minute uh, drive from New York City. And my sc the school that I attended was um, heavily into culture and the arts for the students. And we had often made frequent trips into New York to the, the large museums. Um, and then when I was about 15, I would take the bus or the train into the city uh, and go to Greenwich Village. And I loved going to all the little galleries. And uh, at that time, um, people like Andy Warhol were uh, popular and new ways, the new wave of arts. And so that's where I got my interest uh, kind of juiced up for fine arts. And I knew I wanted to major in some type of art form in, in college. Mm -hmm. uh, so I did uh, go to the University of Cincinnati for two years and um, study at our art and design. And then I progressed to a small exper experiential learning college called Prescott College mm -hmm. in Arizona, where I um, developed my interest in photography, black and white darkroom work. Mm -hmm. um, I got a camera for Christmas and the summer in my 20s or maybe just about 20, I was fortunate enough to, uh, I was in the, uh, a bookstore and there was a little um, advertisement on, they had a bulletin board for uh, learning darkroom um, with the zone system, which was established by uh, Ansel Adams. Mm -hmm. And it's a highly tech, techy kind of way of controlling your exposure in the negative and then also then again chemi chemically wise in the dark room to to uh, to get to um, a certain quality that that Ansel if you look at his photographs he, he has a, a kind of a very contrasty very dark yes uh, very pristine mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. so anyway I studied under Guy Sussman who was uh, one of Ansel's assistants Mm. Uh, which was really fortunate for me. Uh, I felt very lucky to do that. So from there, um, I got a dark room together and uh, ended up doing freelance work. Uh, I worked for uh, New Hampshire Profiles Magazine, which is it's no longer, but it was uh, um, an, um, a publication in New Hampshire uh, that featured articles about people who did interesting things in that state, uh, amongst which there was a, um, 
a woman, a young woman, and probably the first woman pilot of a C-141, I think they were called. It's the plane that fuels in air another plane. So that was one type of uh, assignment that I had. Um, I photographed a, a witch and, and I photographed a water dowser that they take the stick and they look for water. Um, uh, it was ju just a really fun um, freelance job. Um, then I, then from that point after freelancing, I ended up landing a real job at a teaching hospital in New Jersey uh, where I was the medical photographer and uh, did everything from going into the surgery, into surgeries and documenting su uh, surgical procedures, um, doing some kind of horrible things like dealing with photographing burn patients and because they had a large burn center. So, so after working there for five years, um, and then I, you know, I had children and became an at-home mom. I still did some freelancing. I did portraitures, um, and then that brings me to to almost today, where I think, uh, the cameras became digital, mm -hmm. and I got rid of my darkroom and began experimenting with software on on my computer that mm -hmm. would transform a representational uh, photograph mm -hmm. into something new, different, unique. Um, I think that's, uh, Ruthie, I think that's a great uh, uh, jumping off point because we have three images that I wanna be sure that we cover that are, are germane to your story. And I have to say, you were so fortunate to have that access to New York, you know? What a game changer. I mean, not only have the access, but you obviously had the appetite to go in and to seek and to be curious. And I think that foundation is, you know, really quite spectacular that you have. <laughs> But I want to be sure that we cover these images because they dovetail beautifully with your segue here into experimentation. So let's talk about the first image, right? Uh, which is an experimental technique. Walk us through this. This first image is, I titled it Africa because it reminds me of uh, the, the, what, what, the Sahara. The, what, what do they call that? in Africa, it's desert, but it's, there's a name for it. I can't think of it, but it reminds me of elephants or some kind of, of the wild animals that are in Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, this image was the very first time that I experimented using a software program in which I took a painting that I had not finished, uh, an experimented abstract painting, and I merged it with a, um, a photograph of rust. And so the figures that you see there, those black blobs mm -hmm. or whatever you look at them as, uh, mm -hmm. that, that was a, pic a close up of rust. And so by merging the textured abstract painting with that, this is the result. And um, it's, a fab it's a fabulous piece. I mean, it's so atmospheric. Right. I can almost feel, I feel burning sun, but almost dust you know you talk about the desert and i feel kind of a, a dusty quality about it mm -hmm. and i want to ask you about this piece approximately when what year did you do this okay we were living in ohio at the time and so that would have been probably i think i did it about 10 years ago uh-huh yeah very cool yeah. so I, and that was a, a, a real success for me and it, it really you know got me wanting to do more of this because it yeah. was it was it, it, it was a quick one I did it in probably a half an hour it was very quick yeah um, so yeah so that was the first one so it suited your style of quick and spontaneous right <laughs> so let's talk about your second image which is also uh, an early experiment yes this was uh, shortly after I did Africa um, this is a merging I call it a merging um, it's you know sam sandwiching, if you will, a uh, portrait of a young young woman who's a friend of my daughter, um, and then again I took another uh, unfinished abstract painting mm -hmm. from a workshop that I had taken that, that it was just languishing in my closet, uh, and so what you're seeing is the woman's portrait and then my painting. That's all the smushes and whites <laughs> and brushwork. Oh, it's very cool. It's very bold. And then I want to finish this segment uh, regarding your journey with a third piece, which happens to be one of my personal favorites. 
And I think I first saw this when I was running Marblehead Arts Association a few years ago. I had a brief stint there. The name of your piece is TV On. And this, um, this was done a few years, maybe two years after the first two pictures that you saw. Um, I had gone to Paris with my daughter as a, a celebration of her graduation from college. Um, and we were um, in the uh, Pompidou Museum mm -hmm. and uh, they have at the, at the top of the Pompidou, they have an outdoor cafe restaurant. Mm -hmm. um, and so I had photographed one of the installations in the museum and that is what you see is the television sets and uh, I think several figures are sitting in front of it. Right. But then I merged on top of that, a picture that I had taken uh, at, the, at the cafe. So you'll see a waiter yes. carrying, uh, carrying a, a tray of something. Yes. Uh, so, so that was that. And both of those were representational. I didn't use any, I didn't use any software that you know manipulated the picture at all. It was just putting one on top of the other. And yet it's, you know, it's so crisp and that, that piece in particular, you know, just really aroused my curiosity. Uh, let's continue on, Ruthie. Let's talk about your, your work in terms of how you would describe it. I, I described it, you know, from my point of view briefly. Um, but lead us down this path. Well, um, I, I, unlike painting, um, which I dabbled in, I'm not good at it, but I like doing it. But Painting, I, I get really frustrated easily because it's nothing's working and I, I, I it just takes so long and um, and I don't I do I just do abstractions. Um, well, unlike painting, when I do these photographs, I get them done really quickly. Mm -hmm. And my husband, he'll spend all day on a photograph, but mm -hmm. I just don't have, I don't have the patience for. <laughs> so if, if I, I'll mess around and, you know, put things together or um, enhance it with a texture and if it's not working, I'll just move on to something else. Um, because if I don't get my result in less than an hour, I just, mm -hmm. I give up on. So that's my, that's my, um, my process, my, um, what, what I, the takeaway from my photographs, I believe, I, I want people to look at it and go, oh, I know what that is. But then if they look a little closer, there's going to be something off. Uh, yes. something quirky. Yeah. Um, Definitely. Definitely. That's the question, you know, that I talked about early on. I think your, I think your work really, uh, in my words, arouses curiosity, but keep going. <laughs> um, and I, I love mi mystery. I love uh, in my black and white work, which you'll be showing shortly, yes. um, I, I tend to, I'm looking around in, in my house and looking at the, the photographs that I've done on the wall that are black and white, they're mostly dark uh, mm -hmm. with something light in it that you, you just have to really look at it to see what it is. Um, so yeah, I, I'd say a, a sense of mystery and I want people to just, um, you know, I, I also think that texture comes into play, texture, yes, yes. shadows. Um, yes. I, I tend to, I'm, I'm very attracted to, to light and, and what it does and shadows. And so, mm -hmm. and I find, and this is something that I've learned in my process is that I try not to get too busy with things. I, I try to really hone in on a little portion of something mm -hmm. so that it, it, it just that, you know, like if I look at a, a door and the sunlight is shining on the door and it's mm -hmm. causing shadows, um, I'll just hone in on that little area. Yeah. Uh, the other night we had a snowstorm and it was night and our backyard is uh, flooded with light from the Rockport House of Pizza's floodlights in their parking lot. And there's, a nor there's an enormous tree in our neighbor's ne next door neighbor's yard and a, 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 my garage and then there's another little structure. And so the light coming through on the snow and the shadows of the trees and the barn and whatever else was in the backyard was just, 
enticing to me. I just, and, and so I just opened the, opened the back door, got my iPhone out, and took a picture of it. it. It was really quite nice. It really yes. worked out well. Well, I love that. I love that because I think, you know, the best photography is really when you have that urge, it's an urge, right? To just capture this second. So we've got three images. Let's, let's get to it. Um, the first image uh, is titled, I believe, Curtains. And this is talk about dark and mysterious and moody. Yeah. <laughs> Walk yeah. us through this. And, and this is, this will go to, uh, my husband and I had uh, taken a trip by car to Arizona to uh, see our first grandchild and and take care of her while mom was when she went back to work, and uh, we were in ho we were hoteling it across the country, mm -hmm. and this is an example. I have so many of these photographs just in the hotel room. Mm -hmm. I've got so many pictures of just little things in which I normally don't see in my environment at home. You know, right. this is motel motel living, <laughs> and so mm -hmm. this was just that the curtain in the window and the light coming from the street, it was at night. And um, I did use a software program uh, called um, Topaz Impression, which I highly recommend. It's free. You can also get a, a higher version of it that you pay for at a monthly subscription. Um, and in this picture, I changed the texture of it. It's pretty subtle. I don't know if, it, if the, the people out there can see it, but um, it's just really subtle. Uh, it's not the real curtain. It's got- yeah. Oh, it's fabulous. It's, I mean, talk about texture. It's full of texture. Let's talk about eggs. This is a really a, a fun one. Well, this one I did not uh, alter in any way. It was, you know, straight out of the camera. Um, and it's just three eggs in a beautiful um, Wilton Armitel, which is a, it, it looks like Nambe um, metals that you get in, in New Mexico, if, if people are aware of that, but it's just a beautiful silver bowl. And I had it in on a dresser in front of a window. So you're seeing the reflection of the light of the window pane, I believe, in the back underneath the eggs. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna ask you about the window because I think that's one of the most ticklish aspects about the photograph. <laughs> you see that window off to the right with this final image. Uh, we're looking at stairs through, I believe, glass. Right. Um, very this, atmospheric. This was in our, our dear friend Marty Swanson's kitchen window, mm -hmm. um, and they. Um, she is in a downstairs condo and the kitchen window looks out onto a deck that's above her kitchen window mm -hmm. and they were re they were um pressure cleaning the deck upstairs yeah and so what happened ultimately is they're pressure washing pressure and and she has sc a screen on her window i think the, yeah i think there's a screen on the window Maybe not, but anyway, the, the process of them pressure washing was spraying all this debris onto the window. Yeah. And, and then I just, and it was all blurry because of the water. Yeah. And th this is the kind of thing that I am fascinated by. It's just, you know, when, when I see something that's funny, <laughs> I, I go for it. So, so that's, that was it's was, i love uh, this piece yeah I, I think very very cool piece and that again was straight out of the camera so, straight out of the camera yeah yeah you're doing the work there with your eye let's let's talk about your process you mentioned earlier and if you'd like to elaborate uh please feel free but you mentioned earlier you're very spontaneous you have uh you know a very um quick way of going about and executing your work right and I'd love for you to talk a little bit more about that. You, the, the, the line that you left with me when we talked earlier, which resonated with me, is you're only as good as your last photograph, right? So you tend to be very spontaneous and, and move on after you've gotten what you've, what you've set out to get, you know, behind the lens. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about your process because you are so experimental. Well, I use two software programs. As I mentioned, one is called Topaz Impression. Mm -hmm. And um, that, that software program, uh, it, it, I've been using as of late. 
Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I'll, I'll back up. I'll start off with the one that, that I used in my earlier works. That software is called PIC Monkey. It's P-I-C Monkey. Mm -hmm. Also a free program, or you can make it uh, a, a, a subscription. Um, the PIC Monkey is what I use to merge two or three photographs together. Mm -hmm. uh, it also has the capability of adding some textures. I haven't done it in a really long time, so I don't know if they probably improved their technology and added things because they're, they're always doing that. Um, but the Topaz is one that I use to impart, I guess is the word I want, impart um, impressionistic mm -hmm. textures. Yes. Which I love. I, I, I love the impressionists. Um, yes. And so uh, what, what I do is I'll start out with, lately I've been picking photographs of nature in, mm -hmm. in the woods mm -hmm. or a river or a lake or, you know, landscape. And I will take that image and utilizing the software, um, alter some part of that photograph. Mm -hmm. But I don't completely alter it. I don't turn it into something you just don't know what it is. So what I do is I will add a brush stroke or a blur, uh, something that just alters part of that landscape. Mm -hmm. There again, people will go, oh, I know what that is, but then come a little closer. Yeah. And so that's what I've been doing lately. If, if I'm not doing... And I'll, when I do these al alterations, if you will, mm -hmm. it's with color mm -hmm. photographs. Mm -hmm. My black and white, I have altered a couple of them really subtly, but I tend to, my black and whites tend to be pretty much out of the camera. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have a couple of images that I think really support what you are talking about with your process. Let's talk about this first one, Swiss Chalet, which really, Honestly, uh, my interpretation was that it was very painterly. Yes, absolutely. Um, and this one, I really altered a lot. Um, mm -hmm. The only thing that is, is almost real are the little uh, weeds or whatever, the two little, three little things that are kind of mm -hmm. weeds, I guess they were. But everything else, everything else in that has been completely changed to again, a sense of mystery. What, what is that? What is yeah. that? Well, talk about the impressionists. I mean, I really feel that when I look at that photograph. Let's talk about this next one, weed. This is really a now that, piece. That's a black and white that I definitely altered quite a bit. You can see the detail in that one. Um, and yeah, what more can I say about that? I altered it. <laughs> You've yeah. got this kind of again a painterly yeah. quality in this case i definitely feel watercolor um, you know, I, i'm sorry I, I i think this is the the reason why i do this i'm pretty sure stems from the fact that i'm a frustrated painter because <laughs> I've, I've taken workshops and i just i have i have a stack of of paintings under the bed that never got finished because i just you know what am i going to do with this and where do i go with this and so um, and, you know, I'm very intrigued by Sue Guest McPhail's uh, techniques, and she really is a, a big influence on my attempts to paint or do any kind of fine art. And so, so um, yeah, I, I'm, I really think that it's a frustration with, I'm trying to be a painter in, in the photograph. <laughs> I love it. And I love your reference to Sue Guest McPhail. She's also one of my mentors. <laughs> uh, let's let's do a segue and talk about where you are in the marketplace. You've got this wonderful show coming up. We have a piece here. We have an image, I should say, that reflects the piece that's in the show. Can we talk to Cactus? Yes. Um, this was one of those magical moments that happened so rarely for me, but this was one of the best. Um, we were, as I had mentioned, we had driven out to Arizona and we were staying in Arizona, and um, one day, um, this big storm, it, this is in the winter, this big storm passed through um, town, and uh, in our front yard, that, in the duplex that we were staying, there was a cactus, and um, 
uh, it, the storm blew through and then it was like the heavens opened up and the sun blasted in and it was like ah you know you just you don't get those moments very often when the light just out right. but then so it, this picture was taken out of the camera but then if you look closely at the clouds in the background i messed with them so mm -hmm. they're painterly strokes in the clouds Fabulous piece, fabulous piece. I'm excited to see it in person, Ruthie. Um, you've got another piece that we want to talk about also. Um, let's see, the title of this is Blue Sky. Again in Arizona, right out of my front window and where we were staying. And uh, uh, I really messed with this one, but I, I really love simplicity in my compositions. Mm -hmm. And this is an example of, of real simplicity on just a couple of things. Mm -hmm. But then I messed with the texture and the color and, and yeah. turned, turned it into something completely different. Now, you are quite active on social media, and uh, I'd love for you to just kind of talk to us a little bit about kind of what you do and how you do it. We're also going to post your sites uh, so that people can find you. And um, I am going to trigger you a little bit because I thought your comment really resonated with me that you really welcome critiques also when you post. I do, I do. I mean, I, I'm, I'm all about, um, it feels real good to say, see the likes and the loves and all that, but <laughs> I, I really need that. You know, you know, as a college mm -hmm. art student, you were in, getting critiques all the time and painting and drawing and all that. And I just, I really think it's important. I, I, you need people, you can't just have people say, oh, that's a really nice photograph. Um, tell me what could, could have been better about it, you know? Yeah, yeah. I love the fact that you uh, lay yourself open for that too, Ruthie. I think it's great. Do you have any other advice for photographers? Well, I've been thinking about that since you had prepped me for this interview. Um, one thing that I, and this, I think this was drilled into me as an art student, um, less is more. Mm -hmm. um, I, and, and, I, and I think that applies in two ways mm -hmm. less is more in your composition mm -hmm. uh, your use of uh, props or whatever um, keep it simple mm -hmm. um, but also as a photographer less don't go out and take a hundred pictures of the same thing mm. for one thing you're going to have to take them back to your laptop and edit them all and who wants to do all that kind of editing right yep I, I, I am a firm believer in getting it in the first one or two shots. Mm -hmm. Just really think about it. Mm -hmm. you, know, you have to really think about it. Mm -hmm. And I know some people can't do that. Um, some people just have to, you know, it's like taking a whole roll of film or something and hope for the best that you'll get, you know, I, I think oh. the odds of a whole roll of 36 exposure, you get two or three decent photographs. Well, so, I love your message because your message is all about being more in intentional, right? Yeah, I think so. I think so. We're going for what it is that you want to get. Yeah. So, Ruthie, I have to say, it has been such a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so very much. I've been so curious about your work for a long time. And honestly, I, I feel like your work would be uh, a terrific uh, catalyst for a creative writing group, whether it be on the college level or the high school level. I'd love to see students writing short stories or poems to some of your pieces because they evoke so much mystery. So wow, that's that's an interesting concept. It happened, I'm sure. I suppose I could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's oh. pretty neat. Um, so um, where in the market is? Uh, I would have to say that the Flickr account that I have, I have not been adding much to it lately, yep. so it's not not very current. Where I'm always posting is Instagram mm -hmm. if I feel something warrants being posted in yeah. Instagram and uh, and then of course Facebook um, is my other location for things um, yeah so that's that's what I do and I, and I you know I'm really not very good at marketing myself <laughs> my husband is is the one who pushes me and he, he'll do it for me. <laughs> well, you two are a terrific team. I mean, you really are. You're very complimentary in your approaches. And um, I think occasionally you do collaborate, right? Yes. Uh, we've had a, 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 a husband-wife show at Rocky Neck, at, uh, Gallery 53. Is it down there on the neck? Yes. Yes. 
when we yeah. first when we first moved here. And then uh, we also had a, a husband wife show at Rockport Art Association a couple of years ago upstairs. Yes, and um, that was stunning. By the way, I went to that twice. Because oh, did I, you? oh I, wow! I was captivated, and I purchased one of your pieces. Oh, is that where you did? Oh, so that's okay. where I purchased the the, the wonderful. Hand, the yes, hand. yes, love it, love it. Well, Ruthie, we are out of time. So again, I want to thank you so very much. What a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks. As very well. engaging, and I learned a lot. <laughs> and um, I want to thank our sponsors for supporting our show, and I want to thank 1623 Studios for distributing this program, and you can access 1623 Studios' website for all of the uh, opportunities on social media to access Ruthie's recording. Thank you, Ruthie Schneider. What a pleasure. Take good nice. care. Back at <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>